So this is an overview of chapter 10 in the PMBOK guide, Project Communication Management. Before I get started, let me mention that if you're interested, we have lots of free PMP prep materials at projectprep.org. We've got cheat sheets, full-length practice tests, note cards, lots of stuff that should be pretty helpful. So we have three processes in this knowledge area. We're planning communications management, managing communications, and then controlling them. One in planning, one in executing, and one in monitoring and controlling. So with planned communications management, we're defining and determining what we need to communicate to our stakeholders and when. So um, it's developing a plan for communications. And then manage communications, we're creating and actually distributing that information. That's why it's in executing. We're sharing reports or whatever it is that's needed. And then control communications is when we're monitoring communications and adjusting them if needed to make sure we get our stakeholders the right information at the right time. So across um, business, not just on projects, communication skills are critical. It was identified as the top skill for all U.S. occupations. It, um, it's just an absolutely critical skill. And so effective communication is essential on projects too, not just um, in business in general, but it's just essential on projects. Now let's talk about planning communications. Really the first step is to determine the communication needs of our stakeholders, and we call this communication requirements analysis. And so we're documenting the requirements of our stakeholders, what information do they need, when do they need it, who should send it, and so on. And what's important here is we think about communication requirements is that some stakeholders need detail, like maybe they need a detailed Microsoft project schedule, but others don't. Maybe they just want a high-level roadmap that's by month. They may not need to see every activity every day. Maybe they just want a high-level view of the work. Uh, now let's talk a little bit about communication models. That's important is or one of the tools and techniques of planning communications management. What they want you to know here is just how communication happens. What's the model that's being used? So in communication, there's a sender and there's a receiver. So what the sender is going to do is they're initially going to encode a message. And they're going to transmit it. Transmit it to a receiver. The receiver is going to decode it and then send back an acknowledgement message. An example of this is um, a project manager tells a stakeholder something. And the stakeholder may say, okay, yes, I understand what you're saying. That could be an acknowledgement message. And after they say, okay, I understand, the receiver then might send a feedback message. It'd say, okay, I understand what you're saying, but um, we also need to address this issue and that issue and so on, providing feedback. So in that case, the, rec the receiver is encoding a feedback message and the sender decodes it. So it's just showing you the model for how communication works and is passed back and forth between sender and receiver. And it's showing you little uh, noise symbols because sometimes when we say something or send a message, when we communicate something, it doesn't always get interpreted the way in which we intended. There's some noise that prevents that from happening. Another tool and technique of planning communications management is communication methods. There's a few different types. One's interactive, which is kind of multi-directional communication. This is the most efficient way to achieve understanding. So it may be us having a conference call with our stakeholders. So they can we can share information and they can immediately ask questions. There's ensuring common understanding just because we're all on the same phone at the same time. And we can ask questions if we're unclear about something. And then there's pull and push communication. So maybe we share our project reports. Um, on a website for this is poll communication we put all of the status reports on an internal website and what happens is that stakeholders can then go pull down that information when they need it so they're pulling it down only when they need it on our internal website or somewhere they access it when it's required we could also use push communications maybe instead of uploading a report to a website and letting people pull it down Every week we send a message to certain stakeholders about the progress of the project. We push it to them, and they're um, almost kind of um, just kind of forced upon them. So they can either pull it down, or we can push it to them. 
Now the key output of planning communications management is the communications management plan. And I know this looks like a lot in these bullets here, but I think a lot of it is just common sense. That's going to include things like the actual requirements of the stakeholders. What are we supposed to communicate to them? What information do they need to know? Why do they need to know it? When are we going to communicate it? Who's going to communicate it? How are we going to communicate it? And so on. That'd be covered in the communications management plan. Now, something else they want you to know about communication is some of the skills that are needed um, to communicate effectively. We got to be good listeners. We got to ask the right questions. We got to be educating, educating our team so we can be more effective. Fact finding and research, persuading, motivating, negotiating, coaching, and so on. That's really important for a project manager to have strong communication skills because of the variety of issues that they encounter and the variety of uh, stakeholders that they deal with.